awareness that is seeing, hearing, knowing. Love is the most familiar experience that we all know. The collapse.
And what about this room? Thought says, I, the inside self in here, sees the room, the outside world, out there. But what does experience say? All we know of the apparent room is the experience of seeing. Remove seeing and the room vanishes. In other words, we don't know a room. We just know the experience of seeing. Does seeing take place 5, 10, 15 meters away from yourself? Or is seeing utterly intimate? And can you find two parts to the experience of seeing? One part that sees and another part that is seen? Or is it just one seamless, intimate substance? And what is the name, the common name, we give to the absolute intimacy of all experience? It is called love. Love is the most familiar experience that we all know, the collapse or dissolution of the sense of a self in here and an object, other, or world out there. The collapse of this sense of separateness, distance, otherness, not me-ness is what we call love. Love is just another name for non-duality. If we call it non-duality, there's just a few thousand of us in the world that are interested in it. But if we call it love, or peace, or happiness, then all seven billion of us are interested in it. So why is it if love, peace, happiness are the natural condition of all experience, the substance out of which all experience is made, how is it that it seems not to be experienced? It is because of a single thought that rises in awareness, made only of awareness, which imagines that awareness shares the limits of the thoughts, feelings, and sensations that appear within it. It is like imagining that a mirror shares the limits of the objects that appear in it. With that thought alone, the ever-present, unlimited awareness, which is what we are, seems, seems to acquire or take on the apparent limits of the body and the mind. Just as the screen seems to take on the limits of an image when a film begins. As a result of this imaginary collapse or contraction of our self, unlimited, eternal awareness into a body and a mind, these qualities of love, peace, and happiness are seemingly veiled. And it is for this reason that the self, the separate self that thought imagines us to be, is always, by definition, on a search in the imaginary outside world for the apparently lost love, peace, and happiness. How 
However, this imaginary inside self cannot, by definition, find the love that it seeks because its very presence, its apparent presence, is the veiling of that love. All the separate self seeks is love. In fact, the separate self is not an entity that searches. It is the activity of resisting the now and seeking the not now. All this seeking ever wants is love. But love is the dissolution of this seeking, the dissolution of this imaginary self. In other words, the separate self that seeks love is like a moth that seeks a flame. The flame is all the moth wants, but it is the only thing it cannot have. Because as the moth touches the flame, it dies. That is its way of knowing the flame. It becomes the flame as it touches it. That is the separate self's way of finding love by dying in it. The death or dissolution of the separate self is the experience of love. simply be knowingly this open, empty, luminous presence of awareness whose nature, whose inherent nature is love, peace and happiness. Not a love, peace and happiness that is in the background of experience that has to be sought but that is shining in full view at the heart of all experience. In fact, experience is made out of this substance called peace or happiness. That's what my teacher said to me. So it's absolutely simple what I have to say to you. I'm still uh, deeply discovering the reverberation of that. And it's simply stop looking for what you want. not cynically stop looking for what you want because there's a way of stopping looking for what you want in resignation and cynicism and closing down but innocently openly stop looking for what you want in this moment not tomorrow when you have it but in this moment 
to take one moment, whatever it is you want, however mundane or profound, and just stop looking for it. And you will find more than what you could ever want. Because more than what can be wanted is already who you are. It's too simple to be grasped, but absolutely, completely realizable. If and it is a huge if, of course. You are willing to give up your hope that what you want will be found in the next thought, or the next activity, or the next day, or the next man, or the next woman, or the next teaching, or the next experience. So that's huge. That's the challenge. And I have blessedly traveled to Australia to challenge you <laughs> in that direction, that directionless direction. It's so simple that it has to be said over and over because it just slips right by the mind. And if it's said over and over and in enough ways and then not said, it can just be revealed. Not as something new, but as something absolutely fresh. Not new, but fresh. Who you are is not new, but it is always fresh. Who you think you are is old and dead. We just keep trying to think, think it a little better, squeeze some life. Is that clear? <laughs> it is? Because that's really the basis of what I have to say. It's not a teaching. It's not a belief system. It's not a, a way to live your life. It's not a, a should stop. It's not an, if you stop, you will be rich and famous and universally loved and never have a sad moment. None of that, I promise. <laughs> but if you're willing to investigate for yourself without believing it or learning it or hoping to get something from it, just a pure investigation out of the natural curiosity of the human mind. Just to investigate for yourself what is here when I stop trying to get anything? And how much of that is here? And where does that begin? And where does that end? And then the question, Am I willing to trust that? And then the challenges get very big. But we'll get to that later. Any questions about what I just said? Want me to say it again? <laughs> you already are everything you want, only maybe not in the way you imagine what you want. And it's that imagination itself that keeps you from discovering that you already are everything you want. So if you just take this evening as an experiment to give up any imagination, any image 
of what you need to be totally fulfilled. Just give it up. It's just an image, just a thought. Maybe a spiritual thought, maybe a worldly thought, a relationship thought, career thought. Just give it up. And directly discover what's here, unthought, unimagined. How's that? Good.